Hi. Oh dear. Hello. I was uh, asked to come and to speak about the heaven sent healing music and tell you that the Lord uh, wants us to lift each other up and he had to do a work in me before I could come back to you and help because I had some heaviness that was trying to lift off, you know, he was trying to lift off my heart. And so some of you um, are like me and you've had uh, grief or sorrow in your life or you've had something come in that was quite heavy and you didn't know how to get rid of it. And the Lord is saying that um, we can look to other sources for healing and we can even <clears throat> pray for healing. And we can even go and uh, be ministered uh, healing and restoration by others. But the Lord wants us not to go to man so much as to sit and wait for him. And when you see his hand on you and you feel his presence come through you, it's like he hits you like a wave of the presence, of his presence. But the Lord says um, that there is uh, three things that need to happen. First, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. Second, uh, go um, before the Father. And so the Lord was sent to reconcile us to the Father. And when you are sitting in the Father's lap, you are able to receive all healing because he made you, he knows you intimately. And uh, it says um, in scripture, a little child shall lead them. But we also, uh, the Lord said, uh, I think it was, uh, you have to be born again and uh, you have to come as a little child to enter heaven. That means not as a child, Per se, you don't have to see yourself as a child, but you have to come trusting as a little child, like the Father's taking your hand and leading you into that place of rest. So whether you perceive yourself, whatever age you perceive yourself, um, it's important to approach the Lord in that way, as in um, an intimate way, uh, not uh, at a distance, because at a distance you will not get the fullness of healing. But he has sent many people uh, to bring healing to us because he knows that many are under condemnation from the enemy and so they feel they cannot approach God. And so he's made a way for us to receive healing, um, especially those who still have not overcome um, any uh, condemnation from the enemy or regret or guilt or shame or whatever they would call it that the enemy would call it. So the Lord wants you to um, approach uh, any way you can at this point in time because he is trying to bring unity into the body of Christ. And without unity, the blessing cannot come, the fullness of the blessing of why he sent his bride and raised up his bride cannot be enacted on this earth. His new kingdom cannot be uh, completely um, established or come forth as he would ask us to establish it. So for many of us, we're in a place where we haven't really reconnected with that reality of who we are and who, who we're called to be and what we're uh, being sent to do at this time. So when you receive the healing, you receive um, the ability and the uh, blessing of Shalom in all your parts so that your divine matrix is put back into order as it was intended to be before uh, the enemy got in there and messed it all up. And so um, he reorders your being and he sets into place uh, all your parts as they should have been and as he created them to be. As you remember, he said in the beginning um, that you know he spoke and we, we came into being. And so he did speak us into being, 
and as it says in, um, I think Psalm 136, or no, is it 36? I can't remember, um, but you'll remember it. He knitted me together in my mother's womb. All my parts were not hidden from you when you created me. And so he has parts in you that he wants to bring forth for the blessing to the bride. So he asked me to come and speak to you about it and to encourage you to seek uh, him and draw near. And it's like um, he said to me through George MacDonald, um, who's a famous author, right, Christian author. He wrote, uh, would a father refuse a child who came and said, Father, help me because I'm really naughty, but I want to be good. Teach me how to be good. Would the father say, no, go away and, and figure out how to be good and then come back. And when you're good enough, then I'll talk to you and I'll let you be with me. So you've got to remember that the father's a loving father. He's not going to uh, chastise you for asking for help uh, to be whole. So he wants you to remember that. Um, he's waiting for you to draw near. And he says, those who draw near to me, I will draw near to them. So the Lord gave me that, and then he said, um, showed me in uh, James 3, 18. Um, now, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. And remember what he said about the peacemakers, they shall be called the sons of God. So um, we have to seek his wisdom. And it says in 17, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And we see that a lot in, in everywhere we go, um, when we watch soap operas or when we, even among our brethren that gossip and speak about each other behind their backs. So we have to be uh, careful to... Um, not take part in that and not to have congress with a, a wicked person because the lord says i will not let anyone into my kingdom who has part with a wicked person and wicked means in uh translation dead wick means alive but wicked means dead in their sins and so uh remember what the bible says and the scripture says the wages of sin bring death but the gift of God, which is his wisdom, brings eternal life. So for you and I, we must remember that he tries to shepherd us into supernatural ways if we will come and seek that wisdom uh, so that we don't enter into uh, strife. And um, then the pathway is strewn with miracles and signs and wonders because we're not grieving the Holy Spirit. He's not taking away the blessing of his presence. And the gentle dove of the presence of the Lord rests upon us and keeps us safe. And I just thank you for your angels, Lord, that surround me. And I bless this broadcast. And I ask for your covering of blood to be upon me and around me and above me and below me. But many of us seek... Um, it in other ways. So the Lord says, just go to him. And then uh, there are many instrumentalists who are anointed with healing music, songs of singing, uh, heavenly languages, and also just languages. Um, there's one woman, uh, Jill Michaels, and there's another one, Vicki Jane Peterson, who sings uh, and then people just be are healed by the Lord. She sings out what is happening to them, uh, what their illnesses are. She, she sings and then the Lord anoints her to perceive and then she sings, you are now being healed by, by the Lord of and she names uh, the illness. So, but the Lord also says that um, he's anointed many uh, people 
to of his own once to begin to um, play music that is uh, anointed to heal. And so he asked me to come and do daily a healing session. Um, he says at 4.45 p.m. every day, so I'm going to do the best I can to do that. So, but so for some reason, that's a, a time when people log on. And he wants people to log on and um, when they need anything from the Lord and they feel they can't approach him. Uh, he wants an oasis here of healing, is what he's saying. So try and um, remember this because I know there's very many anointed people on Facebook and um, like Christina Kybers, she sings beautiful songs and some of them I can translate and uh, they're they're speaking healing or unity or blessing of some kind. And so um, the Lord is saying that uh, when we lift others up, we get lifted up as well because we're operating in his anointing and he, then when we operate under his anointing, that's the closest place we can go is be under that anointing, be the closest to him. So the Lord is saying, come and be fed. Come and buy uh, bread and wine without money. And I will help you um, through my servants. So I want to encourage you th about that. Um, to come and just listen and uh, lay your troubles before him. And as you sit there and hear, you get the message. Um, sometimes he anoints me with some other words for, of knowledge. And I will speak that out for you. And uh, he will do what he knows you need when you feel you can't uh, get there. You feel so uh, covered or heavy that you can't make it to where you need to be. Um, because uh, he said the enemy is really rife and bringing strife right now between him and his brethren. And he doesn't want that to happen. He doesn't want you to be condemned. And there are many things in crafty ways the enemy is trying to make you slide into his pits. And he doesn't want you to suffer the condemnation of that. He wants you to be healed of it. He wants you to be filled again with the Holy Spirit. So he's asking uh, many like me to come and do this for him on behalf of his brethren. So remember when we lift each other up, we are lifted up as well. Okay, so I'm just going to do what he says next. Okay, so this might be a, a little bit too loud, but and hopefully the dog sound will come in. But here you go.
The Lord showed me something about this music. He said we're 99% water almost. Oh, I can't remember how what percent. But he showed me when I put the water glass in front of the instrument um, and played the sonatas, the water uh, completely uh, was purified. So anything that was in it that was not of him. Any toxins or chemicals or whatever were it purified. So this purifies you in a different way because it's a resonance of the sound waves of the notes that speak a different language. And it's the language of heaven. And it's the language that we were all keyed to when we first were created and born. And there was a song sung over us and there was music sung, uh, played over us. And so many of us um, need to be uh, rekeyed is what I say, like tuned to the Lord's frequency of who we are. It's like tuning an instrument. So the Lord's just saying um, that even though you don't understand it, you will feel energies um, being realigned in your body. Uh, and you may feel tingling somewhere in your body, or you may feel uh, like uh, different parts of your body in the doors of your body are being realigned. So that any uh, forces of darkness are being expelled. Um, your soul is being cleaned out. Uh, you're being washed uh, and cleansed by the presence of the Holy Ghost, which pours out of these um, instruments when they are anointed, uh, played by an anointed person, uh, according to the direction, uh, composition, like the Lord is the composer, and so he's telling me what to play. In actual fact, I do not know this sonata. It is already... Um, being played through me. If I know it, I don't remember that I know it, is what I'm saying. So, uh, this is um, how it was explained to me by a friend who also is a tuner of uh, instruments. And so he said, um, an instrument can affect you different ways if you're sitting close to it or far away which I understand completely. So the Lord just saying that if you, as his living stones, come and sit near the headstone, which he is, you'll be retuned to the knowledge and wisdom of Christ, and you can walk through each day in victory and can come to know the deeper hidden secrets of heaven and walk with him through heaven and see your life through his eyes and his heart. And then your heart becomes twinned with his. And that's uh, how you become the sons and daughters of the king again. Through a uh, re-consecration of your hearts. And then you're able to see with his eyes. Your vision is cleared. And the pineal gland, which is in the center of your forehead, that's been corroded by seeing things uh, of sin in the world and violence or whatever that you've seen, is cleansed and retuned like a crystal. To uh, It's made crystal clear and, and able to see again. Your open eyes are your... Uh, closed eyes are open, and um, the eyes of your heart are opened to see what he wants you to see and know what you should know uh, to prepare your heart for that day or that year or whatever is coming. So uh, he says that uh, this music will help them, that's what he's saying. I'm trying to hear what he's saying, that's why I'm halting.
in ways that they cannot perceive or understand always, but it will help them. So he wants me to keep playing and uh, singing because each of us have a different uh, imprint on our voice. So the song he wants me to sing today is A, uh, a song of forgiveness, but it's not so much um, you forgiving your those who trespass against you, but him forgiving you, letting you know that no matter how far you fall, or no matter how far you fall from him or grace, he is singing constantly over you, saying, come back, come back, I'm here. And I paid the price through the sevenfold shedding of my blood for you. In Jesus' name, amen. I thank you, Lord, that the yoke of, uh, of the oppressor is broken by the anointing. And that you put your armor of light around us to serve you and minister to you. And so I can thank you for the armor of your light right around me now. And I thank you for all oppressors being arrested and taken from me and away from me. Because uh, the Lord is able to perform his work in me and around me and above me and below me. And I love that prayer of St. Patrick, Christ within me, uh, meek and lowly, humble, Christ above me, Christ on my left, Christ on my right, Christ below me, Christ ever present within me, lowly and meek and humble, yet all powerful. Thank you, Father. So remember to put on your armor of light every day, which is the word of God. And so if you have this word in the center of your heart, when you meet with him in the throne room, and uh, he encourages you and speaks to you, then all the condemnation of the enemy can just slide right off you because it can't come near you. And those who try to enter your doors uh, with their darts, their words, their cutting words, whatever's being thrown at you that day, just has to bounce right back and come off. And it can't come near you. So just remember to put on the armor of light, cover yourself in his tabernacle, because as you uh, stand in the light of Christ, as you eat the flesh of Christ, as you drink his blood, he says, you become a part with me. You become in, in part with me. And uh, if you do not eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, which means have communion with me and intimacy with me, then you have no part in me, is what the word says. So he encourages you to remember that. And when you do fall and you cannot hear, then you just take Holy Communion and ask him to reposition you near him. And he will. He always does. Just picture yourself uh, sitting at his right hand, which is in heavenly places, next to the Father. And he has ordained that. He's paid for it. So remember that. So the Lord wants me to sing a song quickly. Okay, so I'm going to do it now because I don't know what it is. I don't think I've sung it before because I don't have a recording of it. Not that I remember. Father, help me. So, Father, I just thank you for your presence. I bless your presence, Jesus, with me now. I thank you that even when we operate on this earth in your ministry, you even walk in the room and you stand with us because you're a shield at our right-hand side, not needing to carry a shield. And that you are exceeding great joy because you are a covering and we shout for joy in our homes with rejoicing like Abraham did because you protect us from all our enemies near and far. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Just get a drink of water. Blood of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your precious blood. <coughs> Here we go. <laughs> See? Okay. Thank you for your angels, Lord, that take them out and take that which is not of your hand away. And I thank you, Lord, that we are under your blood constantly, under your blood. So I just thank you, Father, that you give me utterance when I sing, and that it is anointed to heal souls, heal bodies, heal minds. The Lord touched my mind and set me free. The Lord touches those he loves, he builds up, he binds up the broken hearted. Hallelujah. 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 Anna <laughs> You know, I stay. I think I stay. No more, any not a mari yada ye. No, any yada mahanana yada de. How come no ye is a halayate? Hare reposo ne hina hane. Hallelujah, oh my day. He says, I cover you with my tabernacle. I cover you, I'm your king, and I cover you. You are my bride, and I am your king. And I cover you when you call on me. I will hear your voice, and I will be with thee. If you call on me, do not fear, I will be near, for I have paid the price for your everlasting life. Your immortality is already guaranteed by me. Hallelujah. So remember that, and sometimes we get upset because we forget that we are who uh, he made us to be, uh, eternal beings with eternal hearts. And uh, so your soul has to uh, be trained by the Lord and ask the Lord to show you how to train your soul, and then you don't fall into the pits of the enemy. And he asks you to wait on him so that you can know what are those pits and snares that the enemy is planning against you? Sometimes it will seem impossible for what you're asking for, whether it's healing from a terminal disease or activities that you know you cannot seem to, um, you know, things in your life that you cannot seem to overcome or habits or whatever. But the Lord says, you know, I uh, made you in a certain way so that uh, I can come in to your doors and take it away, just like that, you know. And so, uh, it's, 
it's just his message of love that he wants to give you. He's not going to condemn you. And he's certainly not going to let the enemy continue to lie to you about your nature, who you are. And that's why he asks you to give in to the leading of the Holy Spirit when he's calling you. And sometimes he will create such trials that will force you back into that place because he doesn't want you to be lost to him. And he may even have to reduce you to a very small splinter <laughs> of a branch <laughs> where you can get your attention. So you won't be destroyed by the enemy. And uh, so he's showing you that's the way he operates. And so I encourage you. Uh, a friend of mine, she had a, uh, a very difficult time because uh, I won't say her name, it's not me, but there was someone in her family that was doing witchcraft against her and constantly dragging her into a dark place and into a, a cage. And she couldn't come out every day. She just felt oppressed. And uh, the Lord said, if she would come to me and uh, when I knock on the door of her soul, allow me to come in, I would fight for her and I would keep those powers away from her because I'm all powerful and I can prevent them from harming her and leading her astray. And so it doesn't matter what the enemy would try to place on you or around you. If you keep asking the Lord, okay, Lord, this came in, take it away. He's able to do that for you because you're standing under the precious blood of Jesus. When you come in, you're automatically under the precious blood of Jesus. And he prevents, uh, nothing can stand against the blood of Jesus. It's all major protection, uh, like a fortress. He's our fortress, he's our rock. So I encourage you to remember that. I won't um, go into detail, but uh, the Lord says, that's where you need to be. And so some of us, we forget that that's our access and our overcoming um, place is in the presence always before the Lord. And it's very difficult because there's a lot of distractions and the enemy tries to afflict and oppress. And he tries to take hold of our reins. Don't let him. Okay? Just keep praying into that place saying, I want to be here now, Lord. I want to be next to you. Please catch me away. Take me to the place of your safekeeping. And he will do it because he's faithful. And even when we are faithless, he proves faithful. So it's a win-win situation. You say, I have this much faith right now, Lord, help me. And he will bring you no matter what. Even when enemies abound and surround the able uh, forces of God, you know, it, are able to defend you, protect you. So remember that. He is able. He is able. Hallelujah. God bless you and keep you until the next time, I hope. And uh, you will hear and be encouraged. God bless you and be lifted up into his presence. In Jesus' name.